click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, today we will talk about the constraints on an ER model or entity relationship model. So there are certain constraints to which the contents of a database to conform with. Now we will talk about the mapping cardinalities constraint and also the participation constraints of the contents. First we will talk about the cardinality mapping constraints. When to match the cardinalities from one entities to another from a relationship. Now the constraint that if the relation on the entity set of one person is being attached with another person to which extent or degree. So the degree of the entities in an entity set that is related with each other in a relationship is known as the cardinality of that relationship. So there are cardinalities that we can map from one relation to another. So we will describe one of the cardinalities each time. Here we are considering only the binary relationships for the entire explanation of constraints. First we will describe the one-to-one -one mapping of cardinality. Say for instance we have two entity A and B on an entity set and there lies the attributes A1, A2, A3, A4 and B1, B2, B3 on the B relation. Now the one-to-one -one mapping of the cardinality will suggest that each attribute of that A entity will be mapped to one attribute and at most one attribute to the B entity. So A1 can be mapped with B1, A2 can be B2 and A3 can be B3. So it is not always mandatory that we have to map each of the attributes but if there is a mapping so it has to be from one entity from the left entity sets for to the right entity set on the on attribute. So this is known as a one to one mapping of cardinality. The next type is the one to many type of mapping. See the one to many relationship or the mapping cardinality exists when one attribute from the left entity on the entity set is matched or mapped with more than one attribute on the right entity on the entity set. Here A1 is mapped with B1 and B2 whereas A2 is mapped with B3 and B4. Here also it is not mandatory to map every attribute of an entity with the another one but if there is a mapping it can be an one to one as well as one to many. So it is not always mandatory that it has to be always one to many. In a one to many relation we can have a one to one relation too. Say if there is in a relation B5 exists in this B entity. So we can map the A3 to B5 rather than mapping it to any other one existently. That is all for the one to many. Next we will move from the many to one. See here A1, A2 and A3 is mapped with the attribute B1 in the B relation or entity and A4 is mapped with B2 and A5 is mapped with B4. So here also it is not mandatory that we have to map always more than one attribute to one attribute. For, for defining the many to one attributing of the mapping, we must say that there exists at least one relationship like this where more than one attributes are being mapped to one attribute of the right relation. Now let's look at the final mapping candidates that is the many to many.
Now many to many suggest that any number of attribute from the left entity set can be mapped to any number of attribute on the right entity set. See for example, A1 can be mapped to B1 as well as B2 and B1 also can be mapped to A1 as well as B2. Now A3 can be mapped to B4 and B3 and B3 can be mapped to A4. So like this way we can map any number of this one to the left one and from the left one to the right one. That suggests the name that many to many mapping cardinalities. Now when we should choose the constraint based on the need of the database. Say for an instructor and student that is being the entity for an entity set person. Now if there exists a relationship advisor among them, then we can choose on a particular need that if a student is in a personal advising department to an instructor, so we will choose the one to one. That one instructor will teach only one of the student. Now if it can happen that a group of students can be advised by an instructor, then the constraint will make us to map the cardinality of one to many. That means one instructor can teach more than one student or being an advisor to them. So it is entirely based on the conditions or the constraint that is given or the need of the database to which we will choose the mapping constraint on the cardinalities. Next we will move to the participation constraints. Now for the participation constraints there are generally two types of constraints. One is total, another is partial. We can say that if there exists an entity in an entity set has got the attribute say 4 is then mapped to every attribute to the right relation that the participation on the particular entity of the relationship is known as a total participation. Say for an example that if we are considering from B to A, every student of the B relation, if we are considering A as the instructor and B as the student, has been matched or mapped with one of the instructors to them. So B's participation to A on the relationship advisor is total. Whereas if you see just the reverse, that the instructor has got the relationship advisor to the student, that is being partial. What do you mean by a partial participation? If there is one or more than one attributes that are left within the entity that has been mapped to another entity sets. See, it is not mandatory that every instructor has to advise one or some of the students. So in this type of mapping cardinality example, we can see that A4 attribute or the value of A4 is not mapped with any attributes on B. That means the instructor participation on the relation advisor to the student is being partial. So it is not always mandatory that if two entity sets are having relationship between them and the direction is changed, so the participation will remain same. It can be reversed, it can be same. So either a total participation or a partial participation is there for an relationship between the two entity sets. Now we will talk about the keys. The keys are the uniqueness that we need to specify to uniquely define an entity inside an relation. So when we are defining an entity that means the field is being the key to that entity that it provides a certain uniqueness to the entity so that the entity can be differentiated from another entity in that entity set. So we define the keys as the primary key, candidate key, super key and all. Primary key is the basic key that can provide uniqueness to an entity set. So the primary key is not null for any of the entity. Say suppose we are dealing with the student table or relation. If the ID or the roll number of the student is null, then we cannot just say that the student exists in the database. 
because the roll number can be the ID or the uniqueness provided to the student relation. Say for an example, a section has got two or more of the student's name same, like Jones, but their roll number cannot be same. They must be unique for each of the information. So the primary key gives that uniqueness to the entities. Next, we will move to the candidate key and super key, but for now, we will first define the formal one for the primary key. So first we will try to find an E1 that exists from an entity set E1, E2, E3 or EN where there is a relationship among the entities that will exist in the relationship set R. So E1 must belong to the set of all the E's that we have as the final resultant entity sets. Now, what happens if the primary key to each of the entity sets are different and we have a union of all of them? Let's look at this example. We know that relationship can has attribute or cannot have attribute. Now, if a relationship is not having any of the attribute, and there exists a primary key for each of the entity in an entity set E, then we must say now if there exists the primary key of E1, primary key of E2, till the primary key of union, and we have joined them with an union operator. So the final result of this union will give us the individual relationship in R. Then we can say that every union will give us the individual relationship instances that present in R. Now if a in has got some attributes, now my R which has got a set of attributes say A1, A2, A3, comma AN. So how will it uniquely define a relationship in R? Now this one will define an individual relationship in R that the primary key combination along with all the attributes in this one will define an individual relationship. Now if we look at the example of an attribute advisor having the date attribute. So the instructor being an instructor or the advisor to a student when the date is specified or from the date that has the student to join. So here the individual relationship instances will give that the instructor name, the particular date attribute that is the attribute here as well as the name on the right hand side to give us a individual relationship. So that makes me that when the primary key is given to us that is the ID of the instructor, the attribute that is a date attribute on the relationship and then the ID of the student will be matched to combine us the individual relationship. Now, in both the cases that we have described, the set of the primary key combination, that is the primary key of E1, this will be the super key to our relation. So what do you mean by a super key? We will know, before that we will know what is a candidate key. So if there is a combination of attributes for an entity or an entity set that can be used to provide the uniqueness to the entity, then that is known as the candidate key. Now, when we talk about that, the primary key on a instructor relation can be the ID or it can be the combination of ID and name. Both are true for giving the uniqueness to the relation instructor.
So this can be the candidate keys. All the possible combinations that we can make to provide the uniqueness is known as a candidate key to that entity set. Now, if there are minimal candidate key, or we can say that the most least choice of the combination that can provide the uniqueness to the particular entity is known as the super key to that entity. So for instance, the ID of the instructor is well enough to define the uniqueness to the instructor entity. So the primary key will be suggested ID of the instructor is being combined with the ID of the student to provide the super key on the entity set person. Now, obviously, the structure of the primary key, candidate key, and super key, here I'm using the word primary key only, depends on the relationship that one has one entity to another entity. Say, for an instance, if there exists a one to one relationship from the instructor to the student, so it can be enough of this combination on the primary keys to uniquely define the entity in the entity set. Now, in the participation constraint is also important while having the primary key. Say for the example that the advisor relationship has got the attribute date. If it is got the attribute date, then also the primary key will be changed. Now it will be a combination of the student ID, the date and the instructor ID. Now the instructor ID and the student ID cannot be the pair of the primary key because an advisor will be an advisor when the student has got advice from the instructor. So the joining date of the student is also important to provide the uniqueness. So if there are two different values for the different on the attribute date, then it can also give the uniqueness or if it is the same, then also it can provide the uniqueness. Say suppose two students has joined on the same date, then also it can provide the uniqueness because Karth is being advised on May 20 to Jones and Karth is being advised on May 20 to Smith to actually it provide that relationship instances of two one rather than having a single one. So these are the constraints that we need to keep in mind while having change the primary keys and the participation constraints and the mapping cardinalities. So that is all for today. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned with Ikira and subscribe to Ikira.